Support Name Explain on Patreon for $1 a month to enjoy ad-free videos, exclusive content, your name at the end of each video, as well as the chance to have your idea for a Name Explain video made into reality. Go to patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below. Oppenheimer is a very distinctive last name to say the least. It is ultimately a name of habitual origins, relating to people who came from the town of Oppenheim, a small town just southwest of the center of Germany. So this name is of course German in origins. As to what the origin of this town name is unto itself, well, that isn't too clear to us. The latter part of the name is a Germanic place name forming element meaning homestead, whereas the oppo part at the start of the name remains unknown. Whatever the case, the last name of Oppenheimer is of course most linked with one J. Robert Oppenheimer, a theoretical physicist, director at the Manhattan Project, and widely known as the father of the atomic bomb. He fathered more than just a weapon of mass destruction however, as well as being all of these things, he was also a son, a brother, a husband, albeit not a great one, as well as being an actual father. This man led a very interesting life, one that is still having an impact on the world today thanks to the atomic bomb he played such a vital role in producing. And speaking of the world today, is there anyone on our planet today that not only relates to Oppenheimer, but also has that incredibly distinct last name too. As we've asked many times already in previous videos in this series, are there any Oppenheimers left? Now, normally I like to start these kinds of videos with a biography of sorts of the person we are looking into. In this instance, however, we probably don't need to do that as much. I imagine that most of the people who have found their way to this video have just spent three hours in a cinema finding out all about this guy in his life, so probably don't need to hear it all again. For the record, at the time of writing, I haven't watched the film yet. I'm a Barbie girl, what can I say? So for those like myself who haven't watched the movie yet, here's an incredibly brief overview of this dude life. Oppenheimer was born on the 22nd of April 1904 to German immigrant parent Julius and Ella Oppenheimer. He was their firstborn, with his younger brother Frank being born in 1912. He was an incredibly smart kid, graduating top of his class in 1921 before moving on to Harvard where he studied maths, science, philosophy, Eastern religion, French and English literature. In 1925 however, he finished up at Harvard and went over to the UK to study in Cambridge to start his atomic research. Oppenheimer found himself unhappy in Cambridge, finding the work supremely boring, and he really did not get on with his tutor, Patrick Blackett, so much so that he actually tried to poison him at one point with an apple. He eventually found himself working at the University of California, Berkeley, researching nuclear physics, quantum electrodynamics, and many other big words I have no idea about. At the outbreak of the Second World War, however, he was chosen to lead the Manhattan Project, the project behind the development of the atomic bomb. This shocked some due to Oppenheimer's own left-wing political ideology. He was heavily linked to the Communist Party throughout his life. The Manhattan Project moved Oppenheimer into the state of New Mexico, where research was carried out, resulting in the first atomic explosion. While happy about the results at first, that joy turned to horror and shame when his weapons were actually used on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. After this, he spent the rest of his life advocating against the use of the weapon he helped create and being hounded by the government for his ties with communism. He lived to the age of 62, while on the 18th of February 1967, died of throat cancer. Now, that is a supremely brief summary of his life and career. As mentioned, there's a whole movie out there about the guy go watch that. Or even read the biography it is based on, American Prometheus by Kai Bird and Martin J. Sherwin. The dude's life was so big two people need to write a biography. To answer the question we're here for today however, that being if any relatives of him still bear that name, we need to delve more into his personal life and his pretty chaotic love life. Oppenheimer was a womanizer, putting it nicely. He was seen as quite the catch too. He had an incredibly unique look and style that gave him attention from both men and women. During his time as a university professor, many of his students grew infatuated with him, so much so that some of his students even started dressing like him too, and he gained the affectionate nickname of Oppie. As the aforementioned biography adds, his mere physical appearance, his voice, and his manners made people fall in love with him. Male, 
female, almost everybody. He seemingly had this magnetic charisma and personality, and he knew how to use it. He would often have a dozen women on the go at any given time. Some of his more unpleasant stories of his female companions involve him crashing his car while racing a train, with a woman inside it who thankfully didn't die, as well as taking another woman up to a mountain to enjoy the views, only to tell her he's going for a quick walk, but actually just walked all the way home, leaving her alone in the car up the mountain. In regards to this event, he said on the matter, I'm subject to doing eccentric things, although I don't believe I ever did this before. I personally don't feel that brushing off his treatment towards women as just being eccentric is particularly valid. His most famous non-marital relationship, however, has to be the one he had with Jean Tatlock. The two met at a party when he was 32 and she was 22. The two hit it off instantly. They were both intellectuals who enjoyed debate and discussion. While they dated, it was a very tumultuous relationship. She suffered with depression and struggled with her own identity and sexuality. They would fight and argue, break up and get back together again. They were even engaged to be married at least twice. Their relationship supposedly even continued into Oppenheimer's actual marriage. They reportedly met a couple times a year. Eventually these meetings dried up and as Tadlock had come to rely on Oppenheimer for emotional support, being abandoned by him hit her hard. By 1944, at the age of just 29 years old, Tatlock was found dead at home from believed suicide. Though there is still some mystery surrounding her death. She lived a very complex life in her own right, and from what I can gather she plays a big role in the new movie, being played by the fantastic Florence Pugh. And despite how notorious their relationship was, the two didn't have any children together, which is what we are kind of here for. In fact, despite being something of an atomic Casanova, that, that's a great band name by the way, someone could use that, he didn't have any kids with any of these lovers seemingly. Now this is purely my own speculation and there's no reported illegitimate children of his, but the dude did a lot of stuff with a lot of women, especially at a time when contraception wasn't too common. Just saying. My dumb speculation aside, as said, the only kids he did have were with his wife, that being one, Kitty Harrison. When he met Kitty, she was already with her third husband, but that relationship was starting to die, and apparently, when she met Oppenheimer, it was very much love at first sight. The two moved along quickly, even though she was still married, and he was having an on and off thing with Tatlock. They met in 1939, and a year later, Kitty was pregnant with Oppenheimer's first child, while still married. To resolve this, she called her husband to explain that they needed a divorce. Her and Oppenheimer married in 1940. Like his relationship with Tatlock, this one was too full of strife. It's reported that Oppenheimer was often emotionally distant with her and too distracted by his work. This led Kitty to fall into alcoholism. On top of this, it's believed that Oppenheimer had even more affairs while still with her. Suffice to say, this was quite a problematic relationship, yet the two never divorced, staying married until his aforementioned death. The reason they married as mentioned was because she was pregnant with his kid, and that child was born in 1941. We don't seem to know more specifically however about when he was born. One source points to it being in May of that year. He wasn't given the name of Peter. From all accounts, Peter was a shy and quiet kid, forever living in the shadow of his father, often bullied at school due to the communist allegations against his dad. He apparently resented his mother and was rarely on good terms with her. And while his father cared for him, he never really showed it all that much. This gave Peter a mixed view on his parents. In some accounts, he said they weren't great, but in others, he talked about how much he loved them both. Peter is also seemingly alive to this day, living a very reclusive life in New Mexico, where his father moved the family due to the Manhattan Project. Peter was not an only child though, as in 1944, Robert and Kitty Oppenheimer had a second child, a daughter named Catherine, known to most as Tony. Like with her brother, she too had a very complex relationship with her parents, her father being distant and her mother succumbing to alcoholism. She struggled with her own mental health however, and unfortunately, in the aftermath of her father's death, as well as a string of unsuccessful marriages, Marriages, Tony too took her own life in 1977 at just 32 years old with no children. Suffice to say, these two kids did not have an ideal upbringing. And while Oppenheimer might be known as the father of the atomic bomb, as an actual father, he wasn't seemingly as successful. 
multiple sources point to the fact that he did care for his children. He just didn't know how to emotionally convey that fact. What this all means, however, is that any chance of the Oppenheimer name carrying on is with Peter. And from all accounts, he is still alive. They're around 80 plus years old. And he did have children. Three, in fact. Those being the kids of Dorothy, Charlie and Ella. As mentioned, Peter is a pretty private guy, and conversely there isn't too much known about these kids either, especially Ella. Dorothy and Charlie however, do make some public appearances. The two of them have even done interviews in relation to the release of the movie about their grandfather. In regards to names however, while Dorothy has changed her last name to Van der Ford due to marriage, Charlie is seemingly still called Charlie Oppenheimer. So yes, via his son and grandson, the Oppen Oppenheimer name is alive and well. There's even a chance that Dorothy and Charlie might have kids of their own. Oppenheimer's great grandchildren. But due to the privacy of their lives, that's something I was unable to confirm. J. Robert Oppenheimer is a man with a very complex legacy. And for better or worse, that legacy lives on today. There is just one last mystery surrounding this guy's name, however. What the hell does the J stand for? Does it stand for just J? Or maybe it stands for. Oh, 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 hold on. It just stands for Julius, like his dad. Never mind. Name Explained depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explained videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explained or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All of that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.